Today is June 6, 2009. I am Andrea Mott. It is a pleasure to conduct this interview for the Dakota Memories Oral History Project in Braddock, North Dakota. Can you please state your full name, including maiden name? My name is Barbara Mitzel Lyer. When and where were you born, Barbara? I was born rural Kid Tire. In what year? I, December 24th, 1927. Have you ever heard an interesting story about your birth? Yes. Can you, can you share that with us? Uh, I think I was born maybe early and my sister heard me cry and then my, she said she heard a baby cry and my dad says, no, that was Santa Claus. So, so they all had to go to the neighbors for a while till mom was done birthing and so you were a Christmas baby? A Christmas baby. I was born 6 o'clock in the evening. And, was it, it? and I, I did not like my birthday on Christmas Eve. Why not? Because everything was geared for Christmas. I was left out. Mm -hmm. Was a midwife or doctor present when you were born? A midwife. Do you remember who that was? A Mrs. Weigel. That's what, what my birth certificate says. Barbara Weigel, maybe that's why I got that name. Can you please share some of your earliest memories with us? My earliest memory is I was supposed to have lost my shoes. I don't remember that. But I do remember sitting in the car with white stockings on the front seat and no shoes on my feet. Then we drove to town and I got a pair of shoes and I got my first ice cream cone. And I bit the bottom off, but they gave me a hanky to hold, to keep the ice cream from running. What kind of ice cream was it? I'm sure it was vanilla. What else? <laughs> and where did you go to get it? At Napoleon. And who was in the car with you? Was it just your mom? My mom was driving and my older sister. And how often would you take trips to town? Us kids? Not at all. So this I don't a think so. So special occasions only? After I was older, we could go to town on Saturday evenings. Okay. I'd like to talk a little bit about life growing up on the farm. Um, and so we'll just start with chores. Can you tell me about the chores you did as a child? We all had to milk cows. When we were maybe seven or eight, we all had to start out milking cows and feeding chickens. Slop the hogs, work in the garden. How long did morning chores usually take? Oh, maybe an hour, maybe not quite. There was several of us, my sister and a brother, myself, mom. Did you have one chore that you disliked more than the others? Milking cows. Why so? Well, at that time there was no nothing to spray the cows with for flies, and then the tail would always swish. Sometimes we'd take the tail and tie it on the leg, take it apart and put a knot on, tie it on the leg so they couldn't swish. <laughs> Was it just you who did that or but all of your I think we all did. And another thing we would like to do, we would went a lot of cats. And they were trained, they'd open their mouth and we would just milk right into their mouth. And they would sit under the cow with us and drink milk. <laughs> so they shared in the chores a little bit? Of course. Did you ever play any games while you were out there? We played in the winter time, fox and the goose. And um, just sleighing, sledding, we'd like to do that. There was always snow banks and always everybody had a sled. Sometimes we'd go sledding evenings if it's moonlight. Play hide and go seek outside. With all the snow? Mm -hmm. And at school we like to play softball. During recess I knew an hour. You mentioned the fox and the goose. What is that game? You, I'll see, it's, it's a winter game. You make a big circle in the snow and then there's two home bases, and then the fox would chase the geese. There was one 
person that was it. And he would chase us until we were all caught. Then somebody else would be the fox. And you played some of these games at school, you said? Mm-hmm. Um, were there any indoor games that you would play? Not that much inside. We played Andy, Andy over, high Andy over, throw a ball across the building. You probably played that too. Andy I over, I think it was called. Andy I over? Yeah, or pump, pump, pull away. And what was that game? I don't even remember. You kind of held hands and somebody would start running and try and break the grip, and then you would be caught. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you went to school? We went to school at Sealand Town School for all 12 years. What was that like? Was that well, we like? liked it. And how would you get to school? We drove with our neighbors with a horse and trailer, spring and summer. In the winter time, we drove with the sleigh and the horses. We'd bundle up warm, sit in the box, a blanket, blanket over our heads. We were warm. Did you have anything warm in your feet? No, we had blankets around. We wore overshoes. And how long would it usually take you to get to school? I don't know, about 45 minutes. We'd go cross country in the woods. Maybe a little longer. I don't know. And uh, what, are, what are some of your fondest memories of going to school in Zealand? Of going to school? Oh, I like to play softball, kitten ball, we called it, recess time. Kitten ball, huh? Mm hmm. It's like softball. Why we called it kitten ball, I don't know. And what kind of subjects did you, did you study in school there? Subjects? Oh, like it, what we do now history, geography. With math, spelling, reading, literature. What was your favorite? I like to read. Did you have a favorite book then? We just had a library. We had no books at home, but we had a library at school. I like to read anything. What about um, coursework? Did you have homework at all? Oh, yes. Math was hard. I had a lot of math homework. Did any of your siblings help with that? Maybe? Sometimes. Do you remember any of your teachers? I've got some in uh, my autograph book. <laughs> They're listed in there. Uh, Mrs. Old Miss Olson was a first grade teacher. I think she taught there most all her school years. And what do you remember the most about Miss Olson? She smelled so nice. What did she smell like? Well, maybe perfume. I like to get close to her. She smelled nice. Um, did you do any activities besides softball in school? Like in high school, we would have a class play every year, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. It was for money making. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember any of the plays? Not really. It's so long ago. Mm -hmm. um, were you ever a part of the plays? Sometimes. What would you do? Well, we take a part of the play and acting, I suppose. I maybe we were a, something in the play, a member of the cast. What kind of costumes would you wear? Were those usually just homemade, or were those just a part of? Um, well, sometimes we had to wear like men's suits or ladies with long dresses and things like that. That was fun. How about makeup? I don't think so. Um, now high school, um, what did I want to say? Just a second. What about dances when you were in high school? What kind of dances would you do or did you have dances? Oh, we had dances. My parents were strict. I could go to dances once in a while. Maybe the last year of high school or junior, senior, I got to go a little more often. 
They were fun. They were fun. What were they like? It was just fun. You dance and. What kind of dances? Waltzes and polkas and two steps. And where did you learn how to dance? My sister taught me. And which sister was that? Emma. Mm -hmm. Or we would teach each other, you know. Mm -hmm. What kind of dresses did you wear to these dances? Lots of skirts and sweaters. Skirts and sweaters. That was about it. How would you do your hair? Well, my hair is naturally curly, so I couldn't do too much with it. So it was curled all the time then? All the time. And my friends in the grade school, they all had straight hair. Mm -hmm. Bopped in the back and bangs. Did you want straight hair? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> we were kind of envied sometimes because they had to get perms and we didn't. Made it a little easier for you. Mm -hmm. um, how did you ever help prepare for these these dances? As no. far as decorations, no. they would hire a band. What kind of bands? Mm, what were some of their names? I can't. Mm. Just people, uh, you know, to be a group. The Roy Holzer band. That was probably my favorite one. Why were they your favorite? Well, they were local people. They played well. We thought they did. Mm -hmm. What about barn dances? Very few. Why, why not? I don't think they had so many then. Not that I knew of. When I was so very smaller, my brother would have barn dances in our barn. But we never got to go. Did you ever look in? Well, maybe a little bit. We had what, a what did you see? Well, they were upstairs and dancing, and and we just watch them dance. Um, when uh, when you'd go to town for school, what was that like? What what was different about town than than on the farm? What is, oh, they had stores. You could buy ice cream if you had money, or pop, or candy bars, bubble gum. So a lot of treats. Mm -hmm. um, what about the way the town people perceived farm people? What do you remember about that? I don't know. We had friends in town. We would visit too sometimes, or they would come out to the farm. And when these visitors would come out to the farm, what kind of things would you do with them? We'd play. Like what things would you play? Mm -hmm. What things they would play? Sometimes we'd go outside and play tag or hide and go seek in the farm buildings or. Inside, we'd like to play cards. What was it? Uh, some games. Button, button, who's got the button? Yeah, I would play that sometimes. Oh, what's that game? Can you explain that game? I've never heard of it. You've heard of You put a, everybody had their hands this way. When you were it, you had a button in here. Then you'd go to every child and you'd drop it into somebody's hand. And then they had a guess who had it. And whoever guessed right was it. I could put they the button that. in there. <laughs> and would your mother, would she make special, special meals when people would come out? Special meals? We always ate well. What kind of things did you eat? We had a lot of chicken, beef, pork, turkey. We raised turkey. What about gardening? Oh, everybody had a big garden. We would can tomatoes, beans, and cucumbers. We would take a large crock, maybe a 10-gallon one, I don't know, or smaller, and fill it with cucumbers. 
and another crock with sauerkraut. And uh, how often would you can? Well, when the season was for, for cutting cabbage or cucumbers. Can you explain the canning process for us? Well, we had to wash the cucumbers, rinse them, and lay them in the crock with dill, bay leaves, I guess, mostly dill, I think, salt. And then they'd, they'd seal the crock somehow with a plate and a cloth, and then you didn't open it till winter. And they put cucumbers in jars, too. My mom canned beans, string beans in jars. Carrots we would store in the dirt. They'd keep it. We had a, a root cellar, and we kept our potatoes down there. And how did you store them? Well, they'd dump them on the ground. And there's a bin there to keep it from rolling all over. What else would you keep in the root cellar besides potatoes? All our canned stuff, the cucumbers, the sauerkraut, and then the cream we would keep down there to keep it cool so it doesn't sour so fast. We would sell the cream and buy groceries what we didn't use for the house. How much cream would you would, would the family usually sell? Dependent? I can't say. Depends how many cows you milked at the time. You probably milked a lot more in the summertime than you did in the wintertime. Now were the funds that you used when you sold the cream, those were used to buy groceries. What kind of groceries would, would you buy in town? Groceries, sugar, salt, coffee, baking powder, or chop, cocoa, not much more. A bag of candy we would get, all. mom would divide it among us kids. What about, um, was there any other um, type of food you made on the farm that you would sell in town to earn money? Was eggs. Okay. Sometimes they take eggs to town and exchange it for groceries. Um, now, since you lived on a farm, I, I'm guessing you had a lot of butchering. Oh, yes. Can you explain that for us a little bit? They would butcher in the fall. We were usually at school, but they would butcher, oh, maybe three, four pigs, I don't know. And then they would make sausage. And then the, the pork, they would have a great big barrel, maybe a 50-gallon barrel, and they would lay it in there and put a brine on it to, to preserve it. And then the hams in the spring, they would take the hams out and smoke them. And they'd hang them in the greenery. There was so much salt on them, the flies didn't sit on them. Mm -hmm. Um, and how would, how would they make uh, the sausage? They would clean their own casing. I can see my mom cleaning casing. That's the intestines. They have to clean them and clean and clean, and then we'd put the sausage in there. We'd can some, and some it just hung out in the shed, froze, and it froze. And there were so many of us, you know, that got used up pretty fast. And, and uh, would all of this pork be gone by the time spring came around? Sausage, yeah, mm -hmm. except for the hams and the shoulders. Those mm -hmm. they would smoke to preserve them for the summer. What about cattle? Did your family have any cattle? Oh, yes, we milk cows. Mm -hmm. What Those, about beef cattle? Maybe in the later years. During the Depression, there wasn't much feed, so they just had milk cows. Can you explain um, a little bit of what it was like on the farm during the Depression? Well, we didn't know we were poor. Not us kids didn't know we were poor. We had food. We had warm clothes. We didn't know. Everybody was in the same boat. And what kind of meals would your mother make during the Depression? We always had meat and potatoes, vegetables. Uh, 
during the depression, um, obviously funds were a little bit low. What kind of things would you do in town? Did you go into town less frequently during that time? When I was a little bit older, we got to go along Saturday evenings during the summer, and then we got 10 cents. What then would you do with that? Oh, we could either go to the movie for a dime or buy a bottle of pop and ice cream, and usually the movie won out. What kind of movies did you see? Oh, anything. Frank Sinatra and those old-timers. Did you have a favorite? Favorite movie? Maybe I did, but I don't remember. We liked the musical ones, the lot singing and dancing. I liked them. And where would you go to watch these movies? At Sealand in the city hall. And how big was Sealand? How big was Sealand? Not very big. Do you remember about what the population was when you were younger? No. Um. I know our school had four buildings. I mean, four classrooms on each floor. And high school was upstairs. There were two grades to a teacher. Did you all often share classes with your siblings? No. no. Um, talk a little bit. Um, I want to go back to chores just for a minute. Uh, did your father, did he ever help with anything inside of the house? No. He was always in the fields? Um, would your mother help out in the field? Not when I was growing up. I did sometimes a little bit. And what would you do out in the Ray K in the summer months with a team of horses. I'd rake them into um, like a swath and then they would pick it up with a hay loader and fill the hay rack and haul it home and unload it and come back and do the same thing over. And how long would that usually take? A few weeks, I would say. So you raked hay. Was there anything else that you helped, helped with out in the field? I would sometimes haul grain when we combined all at home. And what did you drive then? Two horses and Two a horses trailer, and a wagon box. Sometimes I would even take it to the elevator. Can you explain that just a little bit? What was that like? The elevator? Mm -hmm. Scary, <laughs> till I got used to it. What was scary about it? Well, I don't know. Maybe the horses. I don't know. Get scared of cars driving by or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it too often, but just during harvesting sometimes. Or if I hauled it home, I had to help unload it. And where did, where did all of it go when you were unloading? Into a granary. Mm -hmm. Now, did your family, what kind of buildings did your family have on the farm to store all of these? We didn't have houses. that much grain. Mm -hmm. We hauled to the elevator. One big building that put the oats, barley, and wheat in there. Mm -hmm. And what, what, were those the only crops that your family raised or grew? Yes. Um, what, were the, what were the differences between the chores you would do in the summer and then those you would do in the winter? Not that much difference on the weather. So everything stayed pretty much the same right. during the season changes. Um, do you remember how your family um, gained possession of the land that they were on? I think my father inherited land, I think. I don't know, maybe he bought some too, I don't know. And was your father, was he an immigrant? No. What about your grandparents? They were. And where did they come from? Russia. 
There were German Russians. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts from Russia did they come from? I think the, near the Black Sea. Could have been Strasbourg, I'm not sure. It's near the Black Sea that I remember. Did they ever, did you know your grandparents? No. No. Did, uh, were there any stories that your parents would tell about your grandparents' time in, in Russia? No. no. Um, what about games that you would play? Were any of those passed down from um, from the time that they spent in the in the Black Sea region? I don't know. Don't know. I think we learned some of those games yeah. from school. I think. What about food? Was w w did you grow up eating a lot of traditional German Russian food? We ate food made of dough, a lot of it. And is that is that typical German Russian? I think dough so. Based? I think it was made be out of necessity too. Now, on your mother's side, were her parents from Russia? Yes. And where in Russia? Same place. Same place. Do you remember when uh, she, her her family came over? No. Would she ever talk about any stories from from that time? My mother? Mm -hmm. My mother said that her mother had no relatives here in North Dakota. And then Sundays she would go along the creek, Beaver Creek, and cry homesick. Mm -hmm. Did she have any siblings? Did no, she leave all of her family back? Yes. And do you remember, her, did she say how old she was when she came over? No. Did she, did she get married after she came to no. the United States? My no. Dad, my dad and mother got married in North Dakota, but my grandparents got married in Russia. My mother's three older siblings were born in Russia, and my dad had one brother born in Russia. Did you know any of them? Oh, yes. How so? Was it your, your father's side that you knew? I knew all his siblings, yes. And what were your aunts and uncles like? We liked them. Did they, did they talk differently or do things differently? I don't know. My Mitzel family, they were, they were fun. They were just fun. Did you have a lot of cousins? Oh, yes. We all had cousins. Were My dad was one of five children. And so was my mother. We did see my mother's family too often because they lived in South Dakota and we stayed in North Dakota. And the Mitzel family was all close to where we live. Okay. Now, Barbara, growing up, was your family religious? We always went to church. We were raised Catholic. My parents were Catholic. We went to church whenever there was services. Mm -hmm. And where, would, where did you go to church? St. Andrew's at Sealand. Can you describe that church a little bit? It was a wooden church, long. It was always full. Everybody had large families, so it was always full. And was there anything particular um, about the seating arrangements in church? The men were on the right side and the women on the left. What about the children? They sat up front. Was that to keep them out of trouble? You better behaved or you'd have been punished. <laughs> what about the language? Did they, did they speak English at this church? Yes. When I was very small, first Mass was English. And the second Mass was German, the sermon. My parents, my mother could not speak English at all. She could read in German. And my dad could, he went to the third grade, and then he had to stay home and work. Mm -hmm. Now, so you grew up speaking German? Yes. And how long was it before you spoke English? I started school. I didn't know how to speak English. Mm 
but we learned. Mm -hmm. Do you still speak German? It's, I can. It's kind of hard. It's, uh, it's hard to enunciate. Do you practice at all? No. Um, so you were how old when you knew English pretty well? Well, when I was six, when I started school, we, I knew, I know I said nursery rhymes. I didn't know what they meant, but I knew. It didn't take you long to catch on. Then. Oh, yes, we caught on after a while. Mm -hmm. Did you practice at home with your siblings? Well, I was about the youngest one, you know. The other ones could speak. English. Um, now, what what were some of the religious activities that you participated in when you were growing up? Well, we usually had summer school a few weeks, and we'd learn about religion. What was summer school like? Oh, we enjoyed it so much. Sisters would come and teach. We liked it. And what kind of things would you do at summer school? I oh, would just learn, memorize, and learn about our religion. And how long was summer school? I think two weeks, maybe, every day, and it was great. Sometimes we'd even walk to school. It's nice. How far was it? Three and a half miles. Or sometimes they took us, then we walked home. That was fun. There was more families, you know. We'd walk together and drop one family off and then another one, and it was fun. Now, were you uh, baptized and, or confirmed? I was baptized at St. Boniface, and I was confirmed in Holy Communion at St. Andrew's at Sealand. And can you explain your confirmation a little bit? Can you describe it for us? Well, the bishop came and we got anointed with holy oil. That's a long time ago. <laughs> That's a long time ago. What did you wear? I think I wore a white dress. Was that traditional for confirmation? Probably not. Is there any particular memory that might stand out about your confirmation? No. Did your family um, have a celebration afterwards? I suppose we went home just like any other day. Maybe it was usually done on a Sunday. It was, we liked it. It was great. Um, an honor. Mm -hmm. It was Sunday dinner or supper different than other meals during the week? Sunday dinner was always soup. What kind of soup? Maybe chicken. Always. By the time we came home, the chicken was soft. Mom would strain the broth and put noodles in, and that was our dinner and the meat. And uh, what was the typical meal for a church celebration? I don't think we had church celebrations, meals away at church, not when I was at home. Can you describe uh, a typical funeral? A funeral? Mm -hmm. A funeral was always sad. Everybody got to go, the whole family. Were these traditional? Catholic funerals or traditional German-Russian? Well, I don't know. Catholic, I would say. Okay. I'd like to talk a little bit about um, holidays and celebrations. Um, so we'll just start with Christmas, or actually, we're going to start with your favorite holiday. What was your favorite holiday? Christmas. Can you explain why? Well, we usually got a small gift. It was, we always had a program at church we got to participate in, Midnight Mass. Mm -hmm. um, 
And how did your family celebrate? Well, usually when we came home from midnight mass, a lot of German Russians, we'd have lunch. And we had, it was pickled pig's feet. We called it Kolodets in German. We would eat that. That was our meal after midnight mass. Bed and bread. Maybe milk to drink, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But we always had, a lot of German people had that after midnight mass. That was maybe two, three in the morning. And what about um, at home? How would your family celebrate at home? Oh, well, we had Christmas dinner and... Was that special? Did your mother make anything special? Nothing special, no. Just whatever. Just whatever is right. Would you sing songs or, or anything like that? Oh, us kids did sometimes, yeah, Christmas songs, we liked them. And um, did your family celebrate Easter? Oh, yes. And how did, how did your family celebrate Easter? Well, we always had an Easter dinner, always got a new dress for Easter. And we had colored eggs, dyed eggs, a few Easter candy, we had an Easter basket. That's about it. And how did you make your Easter basket? Maybe I have an oatmeal box? Yeah. Would you decorate it? There wasn't much. Thing. We didn't have much things at home to decorate. Mm -hmm. Now, would your mother, would, was the meal she made for Easter, was that a special meal? Or was that just like any other day? Just like any other meal, mm -hmm. any other Sunday meal, yeah. What about your new dress? Did you have a favorite growing up for Easter? Well, when we got older, there was always an Easter Monday dance, always. We got to go to that, and usually we had a new dress. First dance in spring, we did not dance during Lent. Mm -hmm. That was great, something to look forward to. Um, did your family, did they celebrate the 4th of July? Oh, yes. And how would they do that? We'd go to town. Mom would take a big um, basin along. She'd buy, we'd buy watermelon, and she'd take a knife along and cut it, and we'd buy some bologna and bread, and that was our picnic lunch. We thought that was great. What about fireworks? Did the town ever have fireworks or, or games? Just a few general? firecrackers. And oh, they had races too. Oh, what kind of races? Uh, eight, you know, little children, and 10 year or 11 year, I don't know. And you get maybe a nickel or a dime if you want. That was money. <laughs> so were these like. Um, Sack races or? Yes, them and our race with a, a spoon and an egg. Okay. Ho uh, holding an egg on a spoon, you know, and running. If the egg broke, you lost. Did you ever do that one? My mother did. And how did she do? I think she won once. Once that I know of. Okay. Um. What about birthdays? Was your family big on celebrating birthdays? No. no. What about Names Day celebrations? My mom and dad would celebrate Names Days, yes. The neighbors, they would go to Names Days. And what kind of things would they do to celebrate Names Day? Well, they would play cards. Probably have some uh, whiskey, let's see, this Everglade they call it. Mix it with uh, a mix. Would your mother make anything special? Oh yeah, they'd make lunch. They'd make sandwiches and maybe cake or donuts. And how, how did your mom make donuts? How did my mom make donuts? We deep fried them on the stove. We either made them with yeast bread or 
baking powder. Um, well, did your family, when they did all of their butchering and such, did, did they make a party out of it? Were there other people involved? Oh, the neighbors would help each other. Oh, yes. They would take turns. They'd have to help each other because some butchered maybe six pigs or seven. Some had very large families. We had neighbors that had 14 children. They need a lot of meat. Um, now, what would the kids do during these, these butchering times? Would they help a lot? Or? Well, it was usually during school. We, all, we would have to help in the evening. We didn't miss school, but we had help in the evening. All the water had to be carried. So there uh, were a lot of chores involved with butchering. Oh, yes. They would scald the whole animal and heat water and pour it in a barrel. And they'd scald it and then they'd scrape the skin off, the, not the skin, the hair off the skin. They were clean. I mean, they, everything had to be clean. There was a lot of scrubbing. Yes. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your youth. Um, we did talk about some of it earlier, like sports and games and such. What was, um, how old were you when you started dating? Oh, oh yeah. I couldn't date till I was 16. And even then, we, I didn't date that much during school. Some, not that much. Mm -hmm. Can you describe a typical date? Well, you probably went to the movie and then had something to eat, and you went home. Or were did. your parents strict? My parents were strict by going out, yes. Um, when, you, when you were a little bit older, were, were there any community meeting places for, for young people to socialize? Well, the cafe after the movie, or he'd go to the cafe. That was about it. Or when they had a dance, or well, then it was in the community hall. You were there. Was this a big, big place, or a pretty small? It's small. So I want to, I know we talked a little bit about the depression. Um, uh, did, when, when, when your family was experiencing depression, did they ever experience any dust storms? I remember them. Yeah. Can you describe those? Well, the, the dust would just seep in your home. It just would seep in there. A lot of dust on the windowsill. I have a I have a picture. Mm -hmm. have look. Um, how did uh, your family keep the dust from getting in the house or controlling it? Well, you just had to clean the windows off every morning, clean all the dust off the windowsill. Mm -hmm. How did this affect crops? There weren't any mm -hmm. crops a lot of times. Mm -hmm. My sister said. They, when they wash clothes, they, sometimes in the evening the wind would let up, then they'd hang them out to dry, because they could not hang them out when the wind blew. So you'd have to rewash. I think so. <laughs> um, do you remember any uh, problems with grasshoppers or jackrabbits? Remember a little about the hoppers mm -hmm. that they came and ate all your crop. What do you remember about, most about that? Just wherever you were outside, there were hoppers. Kind of stayed in. Mm -hmm. what, what would they do to the crops? Eat it. Mm -hmm. did, those, did that make for a bad, bad year for crops for your yes. family? Yes. And how would, 
How would your dad um, deal with that? Well, I was kind of young yet, so. Did your siblings ever describe how that was? No. Do you remember anything about the WPA? I remember my brother worked and uh, he helped build a dam. Which he, dam? I don't know. It was on the Nils farm. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. I hardly remember, but I do remember that him working there. What about the CCC? Do you remember anything about that? None of my siblings were. None of them were? Uh-uh. Uh, well, is there anything else you want to add about the Dirty Thirties? Yeah. Not really. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to World War II, since you were a little bit older when, when World War II broke out. Can you describe maybe what you remember about that? Well, I remember the Sunday when Japan was, what should I say, attacked Pearl Harbor. I remember really well. I was very scared. I was so scared we would all die of starvation because some of the early history people did. And this when the countries fought. And then the next day, my teacher took a radio to school and we got to listen to President Roosevelt declare war in Japan. What was that like? Scary. I just didn't know what. It was, I was scared. How did that change things on the farm, or did it? Well, yes, it did. It, we couldn't buy no tires anymore. And the food was rationed. How did that affect your family? The food rationing didn't affect us too much because we lived off the land. The sugar was rationed. That kind of affected us. Couldn't bake as much. We didn't buy cookies or cake. I don't think there was cake to buy. We made everything. Mm -hmm. Did speaking German, did that affect your relationship with people in the area or the school or town? We were all on the same boat. Okay. So there was nothing distinctive about that? Right. Um, do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was attacked? No. I don't know. I know that Sunday we heard it on the radio. I don't know even know what time it was. But I, I remember the were. day. And what was your teacher in that class you brought, brought on the radio? Do you remember her name? Or his name? His name. Mr. Wade Sick. C-I-C-K. And um, did anybody you know serve in World War II? Oh yes, lots of neighbor boys. Did they ever come back and talk about it, or did you ever hear anything about it? A lot of them didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's bad, they didn't talk about it. Um, all right, I'm going to move something a little more happy. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about weddings and traditions. Uh, how did you meet your spouse? I uh, always knew of him. How so? Well, our families knew each other. When did, uh, uh, well, what was your parents' attitude towards them? Oh, they didn't say anything. And how old were you when you, the two of you started dating? Joe? Mm -hmm. uh, 21.
Barbara, we were talking a little bit about weddings and traditions before, and you mentioned how you met how you met Joe, um, and that you started dating at 21. Can you explain uh, what you and Joe would do on on dates? Go movies or to a dance. Or sometimes is he a good just, dancer? He is. Yes. He's a good Very. Was. <laughs> And um, when, and, when and where did you and Joe get married? We got married at St. Andrew's Church. At that time, you got married in the morning. You had a big dinner with soup and all the trimmings, and then supper. And, and then uh, they supper? danced in the afternoon and in the evening. Um, and how long would the wedding usually last from start to end? Well, church started at 10, and then maybe 12 or 10.30, Mass was over, and you went and you had dinner, then you went and had your pictures taken. And where did you have yours taken? At Linton. I think it was called the James Studio. Then we went back home and had supper and danced. What kind of dances did you dance at your wedding? Waltzes. Polkas and two steps. And what did your dress look like? It was white. It had a train, long sleeves. Then I got some rhinestone jewelry from Joe for a wedding gift. What, did, what about your ring? Same. Mm -hmm. This hair. Yeah. Um, do you have any particular memory that stands out more than others on from your wedding day? Well, we got married on a Tuesday, and then on Thursday, we had a wedding dance at Napoleon, and it rained, mm -hmm. and it rained, and it rained. Was that supposed to be an outside dance? No. So you were able to dance all day? Inside. and Oh, yeah, it rained on our wedding day, too. It rained a lot. And um, did you, was most of your family in attendance for your wedding? Just my oldest brother. Mm -hmm. So did you have any attendance? One. And who was that? A niece, Marie Aberly. And then my brother Pete. And then Joe had one, two, a cousin. Um, can't think of her name now. Wald, um, Johanna, Liar, Wald, and his uncle Joe Liar. Uh, I know you mentioned uh, a little bit about the food. What kind of food would they serve at weddings? Mm -hmm. Good food. Like at noon, we had soup and chicken. Maybe another meat yet, I'm sure. Potatoes, gravy. And who would usually make the meals? We would hire somebody, bring the food, and they would cook. Mm -hmm. And the supper was, I don't know, I think it was ring bologna and some other meat. Was there anything unusual about your courtship or wedding? No. How long were you courting before you got married? Not very long. Not very long. So how long was it? From early spring till October. Okay. We've always known each other. Okay. Um, did you and Joe have a honeymoon? Oh, we went away a few days. A few days later, we spent a few days away from home. And where did you go? We took one of his cousins home <laughs> up north uh, to, I don't know where, Oren. And we had a little time for ourselves. And what was it like coming back and moving into your home? Well, we stayed at his folks maybe a week, two weeks, and then we moved here. We've never moved. Was there anything else you want to add about 
weddings or traditions with the weddings? Oh, it was great to be able to go to a wedding, wedding dance. It was fun. We like to wait on tables. Usually, we'd wait on tables and wash dishes, and we thought that was great. Now nobody would want to wash dishes, but we liked it. It was fun. And these were all day, mm -hmm. sometimes into the week, affairs that... Yeah, during the there. week. There was no wedding uh, Saturdays that I know of. Okay, we were just talking about weddings, and I'm going to trans. Or sorry, Barbara. We were just talking about weddings, and I'm going to transition slightly into childhood memories. What was the most stressful childhood experience you you had? That's easy. When I was in the eighth grade, my little sister died. She was almost eleven. And what was your little sister's name? Irene. What do you remember about that? I remember seeing her die. Mm -hmm. And how old were you? Maybe going on 14, about 14, and in the eighth grade. Um, what do you remember about her funeral? Well, I remember when she died, my dad went and he measured how long she was. And he left with a car and a trailer and he drove someplace and brought a coffin home. How did, it, how did this affect your family? We knew it was coming, but it's hard. Was she sick? She was born with... Um, they called her Blue Baby. She's born with heart problems. And at that time, they could not do anything. Mm -hmm. And she was the next youngest to you? Mm hmm yes. Um, now, in contrast, um, what would you consider your happiest childhood memory? Happiest childhood? Mm -hmm. Oh my. I think I was always happy. I can't. For the July was something we always looked forward to. Those are happy days. Happiest, I don't know. So they all just kind of blend? Yeah, everything blended in, good. yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the most adventurous thing you did as a child? I can't answer that. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add about any childhood memories that we didn't cover before? I don't know, not right now offhand. There were happy memories, like my brother got married, I was a bridesmaid, and my older brother got married, and maybe the first wedding I got to go to. What was that like? We were happy. <laughs> and how old were you about when, when you went to your Just in 39, maybe 12. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Barbara, why do you think it's important to tell your life story? Well, my children are all looking forward for this tape now. There's lots of things they don't know, and what they knew they probably forgot. So it keeps things fresh. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you hope they learn from it? Well, I can remember how we, Dad, Joe and I, grew up. Mm -hmm. Are there any other thoughts or observations you want to share about that? About your life, about growing up on a farm, or about school? Anything? 
Well, they all grew up on the farm, too, mm -hmm. right here. So they, we grew up about the way they did, but they had little more modern conveniences. We got our Saturday night bath in the tub, in the kitchen. And how did you do that? Well, you know, sometimes you went in the other room with a tub, you know, and you washed. Sometimes you just gave yourself a sponge bath. But we were clean, mm -hmm. but we had to work harder at it, I think. Hygiene was a little more difficult growing up working. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? I don't know. Not right now. Okay.